Okay, welcome back guys. Welcome back to uh, some more Python tutorials here with me, Root of the Null. Uh, if you guys don't know me or if you haven't seen any of my videos, um, I'm a programmer, well, sort of, I like to call myself that. I work with computers a lot, I do some crazy stuff, um, uh, art, video, yada yada yada, but I like to do some of these tutorial series and you guys may have seen, and I'm kind of hoping you've seen my Python tutorial series. There's about 75 videos in there and they're all about learning the basics and fundamentals of Python. The scripting language and that sort of thing. So when you guys are hopping into this series, this is uh, my first uh, series with Python about the modules and other libraries that we can use to extend the Python language. I'm kind of assuming that you guys have a good background in Python, you have a firm foundation, so you know what I'm doing when I'm talking about like functions and variables and um, arguments and that sort of thing. But anyway, uh, for this one, we're going to actually jump into the sys module. And that's kind of like shorthand for system, obviously. And it's really going to give you more information about the environment and the... Uh uh, yeah, actually, environment is really the word that I want to go for here. The the area that you're working in, your workstation. And that's what we're going to be checking out, because we've got our Python interpreter open right now. We've got idle open up already. And you can see, actually, at the, the top, the beginning couple of lines, it'll tell us the version of our Python interpreter, or our Python executable, that sort of thing. And right now, we're running Python 2.7.3. Now, if we're going to work with the sys module, and that really gets us more information about what we're working with, one of the things that we can find out, obviously, is that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and do that, though. You guys should probably already know your import keyword. That's going to let you import a module and work with something. So we'll go ahead and import sys. We're going to be doing that for uh, everything. And uh, I've got a little indentation block there, just because I had some white space just lingering off to the side. I'll run that one more time. Import sys. Okay, so now sys is ready to go, and uh, we can call things from it just by simply using our dot selector like we have been before. So we're going to be checking out some of the things that we can use with this module. So first things first, let's check out version. And uh, you guys should know that inside idle, or inside the uh, interactive shell, it's going to return the value here. So we can see, like, the raw text. It's just plain old string, and it's even got an escape character in there. And I'm sure you guys can remember what those do in that sort of, like, new line. But anyway, we get the same information that we've seen before. 2.7.3... Um, the date that we're looking at right up here already for a Python interpreter, the time that we initialized it, and even with the new line character, see right there, GCC or some more information about what we're working with. So that's pretty easy, that's very simple, and um, we can even check out copyright. Now you can see over here right at the top, it still says type copyright, and that'll get you some information. If we did uh, copyright, just like it says, it gives us all this. If we use sys.copyright, it gives us that exact same information, but remember it's raw because uh, it's only printing out what it would return to you. So if we did sys.copyright and we print it out with output, we get the exact same output that we would see when we just ran the copyright keyword right up here in the interactive shell. So that's pretty easy and simple to understand. The next one I want to show you uh, very quickly is sys.executable. Now this is another variable, but all it is is a string that tells you where in your file system the Python interpreter lives or actually exists. So if I were to type in sys.executable, if we run that, it's going to tell me USR bin Python. I'm on Linux right now, I'm on a Unix system, and that's why it's telling me that it's in that file system, because that's typically where the programs are stored in Linux, and USR bin or forward slash bin, that sort of thing. But anyway, if you're on Windows, perhaps, I'll go ahead and drag my Windows right over here so you guys can see it. Uh, should be able to move this here for you. There we go. Okay. Now, if I were to type import sys and I use sys.executable, pretty sure we can see that it's in our C drive, Python, and it's uh, Python W. That's actually what we're using here. So you can actually see what the current interpreter is that you're working with. Now this might be pretty useful if you just need to know it, uh, if you're trying to figure out where you should put your shebang line, if you're actually working in Wind, uh, sorry, Linux or Unix, that sort of thing. So you do have some options here, and that's a good thing to know, especially where your actual interpreter is in your file system. The next one I want to take a look at, though, and the last one for this video, because I think we're getting up there, it's, uh, it's running pretty late at this point, is the built-in module names. And that's exactly what it says. Built-in module names. You've got underscores here representing, or at least separating each word. And that is a whole little tuple 
You can see it's a tuple with the uh, parentheses in there. It's a lot like a list, just a collection of variables and information. I'm sure you guys don't really need this review, but anyway, um, when we're looking inside this list or this tuple here, we can see all the things or the modules, the libraries that are built in. They're actually already part of the interactive shell or our interpreter. So all these things are actually already usable. Like we can import time, we can import thread, we can import operator and math because they already exist. They're built in here. We don't have to actually like go download them online. I can import time, I can import thread and everything that I just uh, sort of rambled off. We can all do that already. These are things that are very accessible to us. Um, we have the capability to use them because they're already built in, and that's all that I want to get across to you guys here. We can actually get information from there with Sys, and since it's an array, we can of course do things with that. And we can of course do things with the strings that we had in the other variables, like uh, executable, where it is, that sort of thing, and even more. Like if I wanted to get the, um, let's say, fourth position here, now we can see that's codex. Remember we start counting at 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, Codex is right there, and uh, there it is, one of our built-in modules. Okay, so I think we're in a good spot here. Very simple, very easy. I just wanted to sort of get these functions and variables out of the way for you guys when we're working with the sys module, because this is more oriented to getting information about the environment that you're working in, and that's really all that I want to get across to you guys in this video. That's what we're going to be looking at when we're checking out the sys module. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'll be checking out some more of these videos, and you'll get some more information and knowledge about this module. But anyway, I'll see you guys later. Bye.